Technologies Online. It's great to have you with us. Um, today we're chatting to Josh, um, just a little bit about the end of Colossians, um, which will be great to get into in a little bit. Um, but do just let us know, who are you? Where are you joining us from today? Um, we'd love to know if you just want to post a comment or um, anything like that on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you are. Um, it would just be great. And we're just hoping today we'll really be able to dig into this passage and learn a little bit more about what it looks like to do relationship when we know Jesus. So looking forward to doing that. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's great to be together. And um, I think this passage in this time for me is exciting because we get to explore it. We get to get into a conversation and uh, hope that God will make sense of some of this stuff of our faith and our lives. So we're going to start doing that just now. We're going to get into a time of worship and we're going to pray. And um, one of the things that's quite close to us here is trying to you know, draw out songs that reflect what was going on in our community and in life. And uh, we're, we're going to use a song written by a friend of ours, Tim, who wrote this. And it just, for me, speaks of the joy of God about the way that he can take something that feels a mess, feels unsettled, that might be broken, and bring redemption to it. And that's a big part of what we're praying for today. So I'll pray and then we'll take a bit of time and worship. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the place that we are in right now. We thank you that you're with us in that place, that your presence does not belong in a building, but your presence is with us wherever we go. This world is yours and the space we are in is yours. And so we worship you just now and thank you for who you are. Amen.
joy, our celebration we sing. great just to worship together. Um, so now we're just going to dive into our passage, um, which is Colossians 4 verses 7 to 18. And Mark's just going to bring that for us. So I'm going to read from the NIV UK version. Colossians 4. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. My fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, sends you his greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You've received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is called Justice, also sends greetings. These are the only Jews among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he is working hard for you and for those at Laodicea and Hierapolis. Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Dimas send greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. After this letter has been read to you, see that it is also read in the church of the Laodiceans and that you in turn read the letter from Laodicea. Tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, Write this greeting in my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. That's great. So it's a, it's a weird passage, I feel like, to dig into because it just seems like a long list of names. <laughs> Hard um, to pronounce names. Yeah, and I was quite impressed. I, I think I got them did. all. I used to call it Laodicea. Yeah, I thought and it call was. call the guy like... Onesimus. But uh, I heard someone call it Leo de Chia, and I just like the way it sounds. That's very Italian. <laughs> I was going to say, so. <laughs> Greek, Italian. yeah, we'll, we'll go with it. It's fine. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, yeah, it's a bit of a strange way. I think it's like, it's the end of Paul's letter mm. um, uh. to Colossae. So why has he placed that there? Um, what's the purpose of this passage, do you think? I guess he's, Paul, what, what, we, what we gather from Paul, what we see from Paul, is um, he's somebody who, alongside his ministry, builds relationships with people. Mm -hmm. And I think um, we see that in so many of his letters where he names specifically people that he wants to reach out to or thank or whatever, send a message to. And um, for me, that marks that Paul's ministry isn't like this one-man army. He shares it, it's shared. You know, throughout that passage, we've got fellow brothers, dear brothers, we've got fellow prisoners, fellow servants people that he shares the ministry with. And so for me, what that speaks to me about is ministry to serve people. That's what that means to minister, to serve people, to reach out to people. Mm. Um, what that can look like and what that should look like is, is in relationship, you know? Mm. And, and there's something that we, we, I've been thinking about, we've been speaking about as a church, um, extraordinary ministry is marked by extraordinary relationships. I think you see that through Jesus. I think you see that through mm. Paul. And I think, you know, when you look around at some of the heroes of today, I think you'll see that in them too. Yeah, 
that's so interesting I feel like relationships are so much of actually what makes up our lives mm. um, and actually to hear that in a context of ministry and to hear it like defined in that way mm. of serving one another it's really interesting mm. so if you were kind of talking about extraordinary relationships extraordinary ministry extraordinary relationships how do you define those or what do you think we get f- from this passage in terms of that yeah well f- for me it comes back to when Jesus responds to somebody who asks him a question and uh, somebody asks him basically um, they say, what, what are the most important commandments I should be keeping? And really, you know, uh, there's the Ten Commandments that we get um, from the Old Testament. Um, but really what this person is searching for is like, what, what is the thing? What's my purpose? What is, what is all this life yeah. about? If I could summarize it, what, what are we talking about? And Jesus says, it's very simple, love God, love people. Love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your body, all your soul, and, and love your neighbor. You know, and um, so if that if that's our ministry to love God and to love people, um, and and actually if we discover that loving people is about building extraordinary building relationships and those relationships being extraordinary, then for me, what it can boil down to is loads of things. But certainly recently, what it's spoken to me about is it, it's about two things: proximity and redemption. Mm-hmm. And I think those are the two things that I pulled out of this passage personally. Um, with two of the two of the relationships that Paul highlights, Paul talks about this guy called um, Justice, and or Jesus Justice, and he talks yeah. about this guy called Mark. And um, Jesus Justice for me represents proximity, because we don't hear about him at any other point. Yeah. You know, he's he's not one of these other names that have a bit of a backstory yeah. or have a bit of a you know amazing thing that they join Paul in on or whatever. Yeah. He's just his name's dropped. All we know about him is his fellow Jewish person. That's it. Like yeah. his name's just dropped. That's it. Just gets one shout out in the Bible. One shout in the whole of the Bible. And I'd take that, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And these, yeah. these letters are so significant. They were yeah. read out yeah. to so many people. And Paul felt it important to mention this guy. Right. Mm. And I wonder if, if, if the reason why is because <clears throat> Justice was just somebody who was there. He was close. He was close to the action. Mm. You know, maybe not like being one of those, you know, that had the big insight, big wisdom, big whatever. He was just there. And, and so for me, an extraordinary relationship looks like being close physically being close, being close to the action of somebody's life. Maybe not mm. always being the one to fix somebody's life or do something, you know, which is often what I might slip into. It's just to be there, to listen. Mm. I so underrated these days mm. when a lot of the language of faith or stuff is leadership, 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 yeah. lead, mm. lead, 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 lead. And actually it's like, well, you're not doing anything unless there's people following and people being present around something is far more a signal yeah. that there's impact and blessing going on than a lot of people with their one trick leads going on. So just like mm. faithfulness, is, it's so underrated these days. Oh, totally. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I really feel that. And, and for me, I've, I have felt that, I've been lucky enough to feel that powerfully in my own life. You know, I had a situation where a friend of mine had a really, really tough uh, medical diagnosis and you know really rocking their world and they you know as much as their world was being rocked by that they were also worried about the impact that it would have on the people that they're close to and you know we're like family and, and this person was worried about sharing this news and so in that conversation they brought mm. in this this third person who is another very close friend of mine and um, and when I was when I was hearing this news, being devastated by it, you know, my heart breaking for them, my heart breaking for the situation, you know, this this third friend, this other person in the conversation, they didn't say anything, you know, they didn't interrupt with a positive spin or a reframe or an idea of how to, you know, whatever. Yeah. They just stood really close to me and they just put their hand on my shoulder. And that feeling of close proximity let me know that they were there, that it, it, yeah. I, I could feel safe in the midst of this storm, that yeah, there's a journey ahead of whatever's gonna happen with this situation, but we're here, we're close. And, and sometimes there are problems which can't be fixed like that, you know, try as we might. And so actually proximity is the best thing often. You yeah, know? gosh, that must have been such an amazing thing when you were feeling just so overwhelmed, mm. actually. Um, do you feel like when you experience that from somebody else, that sort of changes you and changes how you want to relate to other people? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, mm. completely. I think, um, you know, something I really took from, I, mean, I guess that why that memory stands out in my mind is because it was a real learning point as well as something I really received. It was yeah. a real learning point. I thought, gosh, how quick I am 
to sometimes even just like skip over somebody's thing to mm. jump in and say, okay, I've got an idea. This is what we need to do. You know, yeah. and it's classic. Like, you know, somebody says I've got a headache and everybody goes, you haven't drunk enough water and you're probably Take really tired. Yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, and, and, it's, <laughs> and that's okay. It's good to be somebody who's up for yeah. fixing problems. I think, you know, that's a yeah, gift, yeah. but equally what I really need to, you know, the muscles that I need to stretch and to grow are ones that are, hey, how about just listen? You know, how yeah. about just care? I would just like be silent, be still, yeah. be close. You know, I, I, I'm, remem I'm reminded of Brian Stevenson, civil rights lawyer, amazing guy. He had this really difficult case with a very young person in a prison facing horrendous stuff. And the, and the kid wouldn't speak to him. He'd go visit this kid every week for an hour to try, yeah, I'm trying to represent you and you're not saying anything to me. I can't help you unless you say anything. Kid wouldn't speak, like frozen yeah. in trauma. And Brian realized that um, the only way to get him to speak was to just try and get close to him. So he moved his chair from around the desk and sat next to him. And f about half an hour passed in this session and the kid eventually just rested his head on his shoulder oh, and it's man. what broke it. And, and then just after that, the kid started to share, what? started to talk about his experiences. And, and it was all because Brian got close. You know, yeah. and sometimes that's the yeah. thing that can break something for somebody, a really big wall, big challenge is just, proximity get yeah. close just get close you know so yeah wow. that's 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 one way i think relationships can can be extraordinary yeah yeah and there's this um this other you know character in the story mark yeah um you know some is it john mark and he goes by a few different names mm -hmm. but the, you know what was that relationship there because that is a fascinating dynamic that was going on yeah totally yeah, that that does something very different i think you know so so here's this guy john mark or mark the evangelist or just mark and um he uh he originally was in this like three musketeer like <laughs> tight group you know you've got paul you've got barnabas and you've got mark and these guys were like fired up ready to go ready to travel ready to go to dangerous places yeah, do yeah. dangerous things to spread the message of jesus and they go out on this first trip, their first kind of missions trip, and uh, Mark quits. He pulls out, mm. and um, that's not that's not what the plan was. You know, that's mm -hmm. not. It was unexpected. It was surprising, and um, Mark leaves leaves the crew, and um, we know that this caused a bit of a rift because when uh, they come to planning their second trip, Paul and Barnabas have a bit of a fallout or a disagreement. You know, Barnabas is saying, let's bring Mark. Paul's saying, no way, you know, that we can't trust this guy. He's not reliable. He's let us down. He's done. He's done. We've got a mission to do and he's done, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's almost as if Paul kind of cancelled him, you mm -hmm. know, kind of said, actually, do you know what? You did this thing. It hurt me. It hurt the cause. You're out. You can't keep up. You're wow. done. And except now we have this passage in Colossians where Paul's talking about Mark, he's not only mentioning him, so he's not only significant to him, but he's significant to him in the present. Mark, mm -hmm. this guy, Mark is a fellow prisoner. Right then, as Paul's writing that letter, he is imprisoned with Paul in Rome. And so what that tells us is something's happened there where the relationship has been redeemed and there's been reconciliation. Mark's now back on the crew doing the cool stuff. Yeah, Paul yeah. isn't rejecting him anymore. And there's been some, what that tells us is somewhere along the line, Paul realized that cutting this guy out because of a mistake or a, or a decision that was a bad decision or whatever, yeah. um, that's, 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 not some, that's not the way that Paul wants to live his life. And so redemption marks that relationship for oh, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, I think redemption is, uh, is really another way that relationships can be extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's so interesting when you tell that story because what really strikes me, Barnabas, so um, elsewhere in scripture, like he's talked about as being like the encourager, mm -hmm. um, someone who's there alongside people. And um, I, it just makes me think like the impact that Barnabas might have had. I mean, we can't know, obviously there's mm. so much that's unsaid in this passage, mm. but the influence that like Barnabas's perspective could have mm -hmm. had on Paul in mm -hmm. terms of giving Mark a second chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you never know when you're that person mm -hmm. for somebody yeah. else. Mm. Um, and yeah, he, he lived out what God was saying to him about, okay, yeah, maybe Mark does deserve this second chance. And, mm. and that just might've made all the difference. I don't mm. know. Yeah. Oh, I, I think it's such, oh, it's such a great point, you know, yeah. and it again, just shows that when we don't share life in relationship with people, mm. you know, we can miss out on stuff like that. I need people in my life to yeah. challenge me to be like, actually, I think you need to mm. give that person a second chance, mm. you know, and, and equally, I, I need to, I need to explore what it means to, 
uh, to build redemptive relationships. Mm -hmm. you know? It's amazing that there is a redemption that occurs here because quite often when Christians fall out or churches fall out and you know, folks might have been right in the midst of one of them, is we talk about it like, oh, it's like a Paul and Barnabas thing. And actually, <laughs> they'll both go and do ministry and they'll both spread the gospel and that's beautiful. Yeah. And actually, they kind of use it as a bit of a like box for saying, I just don't like that person anymore <laughs> and we're doing different things. Yeah, it's justifying it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then yeah. here, there's like, nope, we were stuck in a cell together and there's a forced form of redemption that's gone on that completes that loop yeah. and actually says there is a different way of doing this. Mm. And this is, this is like a world away from... Yeah what occurs so often now in you know a cancel culture yeah where um, individuals because of whatever speech they have mm -hmm. or, or potentially behaviors are wiped out mm -hmm. and and you know there's a picture there of redemption mm -hmm. not cancellation mm -hmm. that is so different from the culture that we're currently in um so you know what's your perspective on that and how you're seeing it through through this passage oh man yeah i think it, it, it really speaks to me, that stuff, because I, th I think you're right. I think cancel culture, you know, whatever you might, might want to term it, the idea of removing somebody from their place in your life, whether it be a celebrity, a well-known figure, or somebody personally, because of actions that they've taken, decisions or things that they might have said. Um, I think, you know, we're talking about extraordinary relationships, right? I think that is utterly ordinary you know, because it's mm. happening all the time. It's so ordinary and it's so, I don't want to make ordinary boring synonymous, but it's so boring. You know, the idea that we would cancel people based on their actions, make judgments on them, kill them, you know, dehumanize them, just cut them out of our lives because of mistakes that they make or things that they do. I, yeah, so I, I, I actually think cancel culture um, finds no place in the message of Jesus and in the way of Jesus, you know, I don't see that ever in Jesus. Mm. You know, what I see constantly in Jesus is he's hanging out with people who should have been canceled, mm -hmm. you know? He calls, in fact, it's almost as if he specifically seeks out the people who either yeah. have been canceled yeah. by yeah. their society or deserve to be canceled, and he chooses them to build the church on, you yeah. know, and to change history with. So I think, you know, if Jesus is doing that, then, then I should be doing yeah. that. And, and actually, I wonder if cancel culture stops something more beautiful and deep from happening in our hearts and in our lives, which is forgiveness. Yeah. I think cancel culture sort of gives me the right and gives me this sense of justification that I don't have to forgive you, I can just cut you out. Yeah. Whereas actually forgiveness is all about making a way. You yeah. know? It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean, you know, sometimes in life, there are relationships that need to end. There are yeah, things sure. that need to change. There are boundaries that need to be enforced absolutely because of behaviors or whatever. Um, there should be consequences. Mm. I believe that Jesus believes in justice, but he passionately believes in grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Yeah. Mm. And it's interesting, like our role as the people of God to bring that into culture and into relationships. Mm. Like I heard um, Sam Harris, who was like one of the four horsemen of the atheist apocalypse, <laughs> you know, tagged back mm. in the day. He, he, a couple of years ago, was like, who's leading the conversation on public restoration mm -hmm. and on public redemption? Mm -hmm. Is anyone up for that? <laughs> and it's like, this guy, this guy has no foundation of it necessarily from a, an image of Jesus mm -hmm. or scripture, but something innate is saying, who's, who's going for this? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a fascinating place to be in, whereas the church over the last mm -hmm. few centuries, we've definitely been in the place of doing the witch hunts and mm -hmm. canceling yeah. people and it was horrendous. Mm. And now is a really interesting place to be in, which mm -hmm. is how do we do that in relationship mm -hmm. with people because of the relationship we've had with Jesus? Mm. Yeah, and that's the thing. I feel like it is another form of sort of public shaming. It's also in the kind of spiritual sense, it's making yourself judge and juror over mm. other people yeah. and actually saying, no, I'm sorry, that's just too far. Mm. And uh, to, I guess, strip people of, of their personhood, of mm. actually their dignity, of who, um, of their worth really mm -hmm. at, at the very core of it. Mm. Um, and actually, I suppose, yeah, as you say, like as Christians, like we're not supposed to be in the place of God. Mm. We're not supposed to be deciding what is right and what mm. is wrong, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting, that idea of like, you can never go too far for Jesus, yeah. actually. He, yeah. always wants to, he always wants to be there, he always wants to meet you. Um, yeah, I, 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 think, I think there's 
something immensely hopeful about the time that we live in, which is mm. rife with this stuff. And I think, you know, what you're saying is absolutely right. I think the church, by God's grace, has learned, has, and maybe mm. in some ways has had to learn the mm. hard way of what does it look like to redeem things, you know, dig into stuff, redeem things, and, and say sorry and, and repair. Mm. And I think we live in a time now where we have an authority, we have a, a, an educated voice on what does it look like to accept people back into community, back into our lives, despite what they've done wrong. And I think that can cut through what's happening in our world mm. in a way that maybe, you know, maybe other things can't. I think we can be, oh, a, as yeah, a church, yeah, yeah. a leading voice in our time in the West that shows love, mercy and forgiveness, mm. which I cry out for. You know? yeah. And I guess that's where all this stuff comes back to. When I think about this stuff, it all comes back to, well, what happened in my life? And what happened in my life was mm. Jesus chose mm -hmm. me and he forgave me and therefore made me holy, like we heard in, earlier in, in, in the letter of Colossians. And, and I'm dearly loved by Jesus. As you said, there's nothing that I can do now mm. that will separate me from the love of God. He has forgiven me, you know. Mm. And, and that process is, is a journey. You know, I still have to say sorry for stuff. I still screw up. But Jesus has said, you know, I have paid the penalty of your sins so that you will never be cancelled because I've chosen you and I love you. Mm. And so when it comes to me in my own life, well, how often should I forgive others? Or well, how far should I extend that grace and that mercy? Well, <laughs> Jesus went to the ends of the earth. He went mm. to death, you know? Mm. And he was asked once, how many times should we forgive somebody? And Jesus replied in hyperbole, you know? He said 70 times, seven times, almost as if to say, it's not about the number. You yeah. know, because I don't want you to be trapped in unforgiveness and yeah. I don't want you to trap other people in unforgiveness. You are free, you know, and forgiveness brings freedom, whether, that's, yeah. ha whether that happens in an instant or it happens over a lifetime because of deep, deep hurt or deep trauma or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's real, that happens. But I yeah. believe forgiveness really, really does bring freedom in a way that cancellation just doesn't. Yeah, and I think that's a, that piece about what forgiveness looks like. I think that can just look a lot of different ways but the principle remains the same as you say mm. like there is you can't go too far for Jesus but in terms of I think sometimes in Christian culture we can get very uh, simplistic about mm. how we say you know um, people misinterpret that passage it talks about turning the other cheek yeah, yeah. Um, you know it's not about actually just going oh yeah whatever do whatever you want to me and I forgive you mm. and actually there's an immense power and I would say in my own life I've experienced this in giving space for how you might feel in a situation you know people do wrong us people uh, things happen life is messy mm. and if we pretend otherwise then we're kidding ourselves um, but actually giving space to feel that upset mm. even that anger you know mm. some emotions that we can be yeah. very uh, dismissive of in yeah. the church and actually pretend that they don't exist I think if you work through that process, and it's not about retaliation, that's the key. Mm. It's, it's not about saying, you know, you're beyond redemption. It's not about uh, punishing somebody mm. for what they've done, yeah. but actually just allowing room for like, yeah, this is how it affects me. And I think if you work through that process with God, that is when he can really change your heart. And mm. I think true forgiveness mm. is possible. Mm. Um, and mm. that's how we get to treating people with worth and respect mm -hmm. um as god would have us do i think um, yeah. i think you're right though it's a lifetime's work and i think the reason why we do the big why behind all of this stuff is people matter yeah i think yeah. ultimately this is that's the big why you know why why build relationships why go and love your neighbor why 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 because people matter yeah you know, mm. because jesus said that i matter which means you matter you matter we all matter we matter so much we're worth his whole life you know everything jesus had he gave you know and i think um, and still gives and i think you know people matter yeah and that's why we want to we want to have an extraordinary life serving and loving people and we want to have and we want to do that through extraordinary relationships which i yeah. think uh, can be marked by how close we get to people and, and redemption, forgiveness, you know? Yeah, that's a, a great place to take us into a bit of action now on this and a bit of reflection mm -hmm. for ourselves and our relationships. Again, the, the beauty of doing this just now is we can immediately bring this to God uh, in the place wherever we are and invite him to start speaking to us. And so, um, you know, there's a question that we want to pose and then we'll have, you know, say 90 seconds uh, to reflect on that. 
And I guess the invitation is, is see where this question might take you in your actions in the next couple of days. And the question is just who matters to you and why? Just love that, people matter. So who matters to you and why? And uh, you might wanna jot it down just on your notes app or um, somewhere beside you, just in your mind, think who matters to you and why? And then why don't you send them a message and share why? Or just be praying for them this week. You might wanna do something that's just a gesture of kindness, goodness towards them to encourage them. So for a few minutes, who matters to you and why? So I hope that was just like a really, uh, I found anyway, just a powerful exercise for just thinking about um, the people in my life that I hold really dear and actually just remembering that God loves them even more than I possibly could. Um, and that's kind of how we get to that um, place of being able to forgive, being able to recognize um, people's true worth. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what is being brought out um, here just in this next song that we're gonna go into. Um, before we do though, I'm just gonna pray for those people um, that we've all just had in our minds um, and then we'll transition just into worship. So Holy Spirit, we just ask for you to come and presence yourselves, yourself among us. Thank you Lord for just the way that you speak worth and value into every person. Thank you, Lord, that you've called us to be the people who live out extraordinary relationships, relationships um, that are never beyond redemption, to be able to speak into somebody's life, perhaps in a way that no one else can, the love of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to be brave to reach out when it feels hard and help us to have the strength to, to keep, to keep um, those relationships strong, to keep giving them back to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
And I think that is just one of the most beautiful songs. It, it was sung it. very beautifully by you here. Thank you for <laughs> just singing along. I was worshipping. That's right. That's what can right. I do? It's, <laughs> it's absolutely class. I think I, I think there's something about uh, songs that allow us to just really centre on mm. who is Jesus for us just now. Um, you know, beautiful to think big and corporate and gathered, but a song that just strips it all away and says it's just. Mm. a moment between Jesus and yourself in the context of all these relationships that we've been discussing and mm. quite complex public issues of that. Yeah. That was that was beautiful. So yeah, it's been so, so nice to be together. Um, over the next little while, we'd love to continue to build engagement 
we were, we're like learning every week what is an online community and what can church online be. Um, you'll notice, I suppose, that we're not at the moment just doing a little window into our services here in Edinburgh because we think there's something different that's possible with gathering online. And so over the next little while, there's a few ways to, to get involved and to contribute and look at what that could be. So as always, please email office at psandgs.org.uk. I mean, shout out to Jamie for the little hoo-hoo that's coming up. Uh, so Such office a professional. At psandgs.org.uk. <laughs> he was timing that, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, and just like, let us know how you are experiencing this. I find that so helpful, reading your emails and getting your thoughts. Um, let us know how God's speaking to you. Let us know what faith looks like for you right now. Um, it's really encouraging us. And over the next little while, as we think about what church online is um, and what an online church looks like, we're going to do a few things to try and just draw that together. So we're going to do a bit of a survey uh, over probably starting next week. Then in the new year, we're going to do an open kind of town hall style open forum to just have conversations with people to see what are you experiencing? What could it look like to contribute to church that is online? And um, we're learning as we go and we're, we're believing that God is moving in people's lives mm. in really profound ways. And, and so we're really honored to be, to be part of this together. Do um, say hello on Facebook, do share this, um, connect on YouTube, do the like and subscribe thing if that helps you plug in. And um, just keep telling folks about what you're experiencing. And thank you so much for, for coming and for joining us. So I'd love to pray for us uh, before we head and uh, go into whatever the week is. So God, in the place that you have called us to go now, in the neighborhood, in the schools, in the home, in the office, wherever you are calling us, Lord, would you send us now filled with your spirit? Would you lead us into the relationships that you've called us to be in, yeah. to bring redemption and presence, proximity, and would you go with us now in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. See you soon.